everyone, it's Tracia from Cheeky Journals. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would just like to show you more of the art books that I own and that I really still find a lot of inspiration from and that I just love paging through and I'm getting a lot of use out of it. And maybe you're looking for a new art book or you want to spoil a friend that loves art as well or you just want to have a browse and see what's out there. So this um, is Beautiful Faces from Jane Davenport. It's a book all about drawing faces, as the title says. And this book came out in 2015. So it's quite old, but I still find a lot of use out of it. And I just love looking through it. It's got beautiful, bold colors. And I just love um, the artwork in here. I love those sketchy lines and just the whole style of the girls that Jane's drawing. So in this book, in chapter one, it's all about supplies. Chapter two is about drawing the basics. So she's just teaching you how to draw a quick face and just the techniques and the ins and outs of it. And chapter three is everything about drawing the details Four is about how to paint and create. So here she's showing you different techniques and also um, some projects that you can follow. And I love the photography in here. And turquoise is definitely one of my favorite colors. So I find that this really resembles a lot of things that I love in the art world. So this is the chapter about acrylics and inks, pastels, so everything about supplies. And as you can see, very bold colors, about stencils, ephemera that you can use. And this is chapter two about how to draw a face very quickly. And she starts off with easy instructions and then goes into more detail of how you can get um, all those cool details in and I really find that you can follow this book and you can learn a lot from it. I've seen in Facebook groups where people haven't really got any drawing experience and then going in and following this book and keep on practicing and they're really getting there. So this is more about um, drawing like a features so it concentrates about how to draw the lips, the nose, the ears, the eyes, the brows and lashes, and then hair. I find hair is a very difficult part for me personally. That's what I'm struggling with. And um, I love that she's also showing you how to do a braid because I find that to be tricky, but I'm sure you'll get there when you just keep on practicing and this is where it comes into um, some projects that you can follow with her. Show. So she is showing you a bit of collaging. And I love the step-by-step -step instruction with the photos. So if you are interested in drawing faces and you like to um, do girls in particular, then this is definitely a book that you will enjoy. The next book is by no surprise, also a Jane Davenport book. I mean, she makes them well. So this is all about fabulous figures. So the first one was about faces. So you've got that done. The second one is how to draw the figure, which I also find to be tricky, but I love her technique. And sometimes you don't have to go into too much detail. For example, over here, you don't have to draw the hand, bit by bit, five fingers, all those things. You can sometimes just do marks and that gives like a suggestion. Again, bright, beautiful colors, a lot of inspiration. I would say Jane's style is very fashion illustration, but with a bit of whimsical. So if that's something that you're all about, then you also love her online classes. And I'm not sponsored by her at all. I just love her artwork. That's it and her style so the first bit is about using the heart technique to draw a body so that's the technique that she uses and i find it to be very interesting i've never heard of it 
but I love the way that she incorporates it and she's even showing you how to get different bodies by changing the size of your heart you can get a fashionized body a kid a whimsical one a juicy average and so on she I also love how she's playing with ink and showing you how to do these bodies funny enough they're actually my favorite and then she does go a little bit also back into the face and the features but not so much into detail but she does talk about it in this book too and then she's also got beautiful artwork in between here that I love to just look at a little bit about the foot so I would say this book is um, a good second book to get I would get the beautiful faces first and just practice that and get that done and then I would say this is a second book to follow on and getting the body done and everything so uh, right at the back you do get some stickers and you get some heart cut outs it's my it's like a very heavy card stock and you can use it as a guideline to practice those bodies so definitely another one of my favorites this is a recent purchase that I made and let me tell you, usually I don't buy books online. I love going to bookshops and going through the shelves and getting things that I love. Now, if I've got something in mind, a certain book that I'm looking for, then I always end up finding it somewhere close to me. So I'm very lucky in that respect. But the thing that I love or get the most satisfaction from is going to a bookshop and not looking for something specific and just looking through the books and then finding a little treasure that you've never heard of and this is one of those books I've never heard of it never seen it went to a bookshop and I saw this on the shelf went through it actually wasn't planning on buying anything but I did so whoops but it was totally worth it so this book is completely different style it's more going that vintage line but i do love both i love my color and i also love my vintage so this is all about um an art journal and it's by Jeanne oliver Jeanne. i hope i'm saying that right it's about it's Jeanne oliver i think and this is about um using an art journal and creating your story in the art journal and i love just the style of this it's that loose abstract style that i was talking about which is very loose art not going into too much detail and i love aesthetically how this whole book looks and just the the photography in here so it's about art journaling but capturing your story in a creative style so it starts off with gathering your story elements and you can do a mood board um, and just collecting all those special things and how to display your story. Then it's about creating an art journal, how to get a vintage book and to set it up into a journal and how to bind it, which I found very nice to see that in a book. The next part is about creating a portable studio. And I mean, oh, look at that. So it's about setting up a watercolor palette. And as I say, like, th this is just so something that I love. And it's just a style that I adore. It's these old vintage tins and putting your own watercolors in it. It's just so, well, I think I just got a paper cut there. Man, my skin is so dry from this winter. I mean, look there. And I love the tins with the pastels and then the watercolor. It's just, it's just so gorgeous. The next part is about seeing, like getting a color palette for your um, story. So creating a palette that you would love to work with. And then mark making and symbolism, something that I also love. I also love um, just the rawness of this book, 
how alternative ways of mock making I mean it's so creative and it's doesn't look that difficult really but it's so it's something that I haven't seen before that's what this book is you don't see a lot of books like this this is about creating your own timeline I think it's so creative look at that but anyway so this whole book is just about art journaling and incorporating elements and photos and things from your day-to-day -day life very rustic and I don't know if she's got any other books out I haven't actually researched that I really want to but if she's got any more and it's down this style I'll definitely get it and if she doesn't then she can bring out some more i'll really support her i love this book so if you love that vintage style or journaling this is something that you'll love too so i had to go get a plaster because that paper cut man they hurt badly and i don't want to like get any blood on my book so this book is about watercolor workshop another one that i wasn't aware of just bumped into it in the bookshop what a treasure so this is by Sasha Prue and it's if you love working with watercolors then you'll love this book I just love that it is it's so thick and it just goes through so many different techniques so right in the beginning it's um, just a little bit about how the book works and then gathering all the materials that you need and talking about all the different types of paint that you get so like professional versus student chew paints building your palette adding neutrals about all the different watercolor papers how to prepare your palette and then this is where it starts testing your pigment so if you love swatches you'll love this book so she's giving you a few tips and then telling you how to swatch your colors basically and you're testing your pigments and swatching it so she started off with doing her greens and her yellows so on this side you can now do all your green watercolors and yellow so the paper is definitely it's a very thick cardstock but it doesn't feel watercolor like watercolor paper but i haven't tested it out yet so i can't really say but it does feel that you would be able to use your watercolors in here but with restraint so a little bit of water but not like puddles of it because you're gonna then get into trouble obviously so this is then all about swatching out all your different colors and then the next section is where she's talking about the wet on dry technique so she's explaining the technique to you and then again on the side a lot of tips and technique information and then she has done her greens and yellows and using that technique the wet on dry technique you can now swatch out your greens and yellows on the opposite page so as i said a lot of swatching but through that swatching you learning techniques and i love that it's so therapeutic then after you've like done all your swatching now you're going to use that technique and apply it to an experiment or a project whatever you want to call it so she's explaining the project in step-by-step step form and then she's done the project and that's her end result with her tips and techniques on the side and on the opposite page you've got a very faint uh, line here like a sketch of the sea coral and then you can practice painting that with the wet on dry technique that you have been practicing in your swatches and you get a few of those projects so in total i think one two three four five five projects to practice that technique then the next one is the wet on wet technique again explaining the technique doing her swatches using that technique and then 
on the opposite page you can practice that technique with the watercolors that you have and then applying your skill to projects so just talking about the first project her result and then you can do it over here on this side and again it's a few also five projects that you can practice on the next one is ombre so i'm just gonna now this whole book is exactly like that just with different techniques so it's the swatches and then the projects on how to apply that technique now the next section is the bloom technique so swatches and then practicing that technique in projects then you have the flat wash technique the projects the next technique is the lifting so it's like a study i would say very in a study form which funny enough is something that i love it feels like you're doing a little course in watercolors <laughs> the next one is a layering technique and then just the projects and then the last bit is freeform experiments so all the techniques that you've just like practiced you can now do your own sketches here at the back and do your watercolor swatching and play around with it so that's the watercolor workshop as i say if you love working with watercolors and doing swatches i think this is a good book to have so the fifth and last book is watercolor with me in the forest by donna fox so if you love step-by-step -step instructions and you're just beginning with watercolor this is a good book to get i love the images in here and i think this book is so big that it doesn't even like fit on the screen but i'll try and wangle it so you have four sections and each section's got different projects you've got wet on dry wet on wet painting fur and then the last one is ink and wash and it starts off by explaining the technique to you and then you can practice it here in your um how to achieve that light look and a dark look so it's just a bit of i would say watercolor swatching on the left hand side you get a very light outline of the acorns and this is on watercolor paper so you can do these exercises in the book and then on the right hand side you've got a step-by-step -step instruction on how to achieve that look with the colors that you're going to need and the supplies so it says three colors of paint a round brush and it even says like about a size six will work well i love that she's put the swatches here because i feel that sometimes you don't if they just say yellow ochre raw umber burnt umber okay those are very standard colors but maybe you don't have any of those in your palette but you've got a similar one to raw umber then you can definitely replace that so that's one of the reasons that i love that she's actually put the colors there so you can compare it and all these projects are practicing wet on dry techniques now I know some people don't want to do it in this book so if you don't want to you can definitely sketch out these sketches into an art journal and um, or a watercolor pad and practice it on there. I love this mushroom and then the next is wet on wet so practicing it and different techniques of achieving it like wet the paper and then put the color in drop the color in and then tilt to bend and then you get your different projects so i think if i am doing these projects i'm definitely going to do it in the book because i've only paid i mean 26 dollars for it that's what it's there for so i don't mind doing that but that's just my personal opinion because if i'm done with this book hopefully i'm good enough to take the techniques and do my own things in a watercolor book or or journal the next one's painting fur so a lot of animals and 
I would be able to paint my own things and do some sketches. So you want to develop yourself. You don't want to be stuck in a rut all the time. And I can also still use the instruction and try and draw it over and paint it. So I can still develop for it. But I think to start off, it would be good doing it in the book. But as I say, that's just my personal opinion. And I think it's important to show people when you just start out what work looks like. It's nice to have it in a book and to see it. Like, I don't want to hide that part of me. I want to, like, really see the bad work and then how I've improved. And that also inspires other people that are just starting out. That, yeah, it's not going to be that good in the beginning, but you're trying. And you actually are proud of yourself for giving it a go. So... That's also one of the reasons that I want to do it in the book. And the next part is ink and wash. And that's the last section. So those are my top five favorite books. And I think it really um, just shows my style and what I'm interested in, which is watercolor. And then I also love that bright colored, whimsical fashion illustrations like mixed media. And also those vintage art journal pages using neutral colors or a limited palette, mark making, very uh, free flowing kind of art. And Please let me know what's your favorite books down below in the comments and what's the next art book that you're looking forward to getting. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.